This is a fan generated show. If you would like to support us, please go to jamieglazoff.com and also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And make sure to order Jamie Glazov's new critically acclaimed jihadist psychopath. How he is charming, seducing, and devouring us. All your support is greatly appreciated. Good evening. Welcome to the Glazov Gang. Tonight, Hillary running? Question mark. With us this evening, back by popular demand, Daniel Greenfield, a Shulman Fellow at the David Horowitz Freedom Center and the editor and writer at the blog The Point at Front Page Magazine. Daniel, what an honor, pleasure, and privilege to have you back. It's an honor, a pleasure, and privilege. I just wish we were talking about a more cheerful topic and a more appealing one. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, Daniel, we've been flooded with emails and calls all about your hat. Have you come under pressure and finally surrendered and put the hat back on? I felt that the hat was needed, especially considering the topic we're going to handle, because I think it's just too much to handle without a hat on. I actually recommend the viewers at home, if they have a hat, bicycle, helmet, anything, just actually put it on over their heads right now, because the topic we're going to cover, uh, it's something you're going to want to keep lightning away from your head. <laughs> That's right. Daniel, have you ever considered, or could we talk you into, putting the Glazoff gang logo on your hat. Uh, I'm pretty sure it could be arranged. I think we'd probably want a Boer hat to match the logo. All right, all right. We'll get back to this. Daniel, Ari Lieberman wrote an article in Front Page Magazine recently with the title of this show, so we credit his excellent article at Front Page, Hillary Running, question uh, mark, to this show. We're going to discuss several of his themes you've written very interesting blog lately as well. Quote, Hillary Clinton sending up trial balloons for jumping in. And uh, you unveiled uh, the, uh, I guess we could say, relevant phenomena happening here. Let's start with this, Daniel. It, is there a chance Hillary might get back into this? And this sounds Kafkaesque and nightmarish for several reasons. No, I don't think there's any chance, but you have to remember that Hillary Clinton has dedicated the bulk of her life, perhaps really her entire life, to this plan to become president of the United States. Uh, there is nothing else to her. There's nothing else in her. Um, if you consider just the kind of stretch the entire time since um, Bill, moment Bill Clinton left the White House, she began plotting how to get back inside it, her entire Senate career, which really nobody can really discuss what was happening in it, was built an entire strategy to get her to the White House. Everything she did since then in the Obama administration was built on getting her to the White House. Everything she's done is built on getting her to the White House. This was the sole reason for her existence. So yes, she would very much like to run because there is absolutely nothing else in her life. But that the problem is reality, much as the uh, two previous times the problem was reality. But before at least she had a much clearer path to actually get to there, to get to the nomination at this point, Getting to the nomination would require killing every other candidate in the race, um, killing everybody in the Democrat Party, then killing everybody in America, and she still probably would not be president. Huh. Okay, just a sec. Daniel, I want to take you up on one thing where you said there's nothing in her life. Now, wait a minute. That might not be fair. How about that passionate romance that's still ensuing with her husband? Oh, yes. I think we've all seen just how passionate that romance is. Um, in the past, it's been a passionate romance between Bill Clinton and any woman, girl, or vaguely female-shaped object that happened across his path. Um, by the time of the last convention, it seemed to be a romance between Bill Clinton and inflatable balloons, which I guess is the natural, logical progression of his entire life. Um, after she lost, Hillary Clinton retreated into the woods and became this kind of Bigfoot phenomenon. People would say, I saw Hillary Clinton in the woods drinking Chardonnay, and then she just vanished into the mist like a ghost. So um, that's really been her entire life. I mean, there are people who love other people, even bad people sometimes love other people. The only thing Hillary Clinton loves is power. Uh, the, the only thing in her life, she married Bill Clinton because it got her closer to power. The problem was that while people did like Bill Clinton, I mean, say whatever you will, a lot of people found him likable, he had charm, he had the ability to manage a room, he tended to remember other people's names. Hillary Clinton had none of those qualities. By marrying Bill Clinton, she was able to get very close to power. She was able to even make it into the White House. 
but on her own, she has never been able to make it into the White House, no matter how much corruption, no matter how much elections are rigged. And at this point, uh, everybody in the Democrat Party is very, very tired of her. They're tired of her associates. They're tired of the people she brings to the party. Every time she actually steps forward and makes public statement, the Democrats go down a few points. So uh, unless, again, she manages to um, fundamentally brainwash the entire country, I don't think this is happening. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, since we're talking about Bill, let me just flash back for a second to something that I think interests all of us is this hypocrisy of the Me Too movement and how it relates to Hillary. Um, in terms of the war that Hillary waged against uh, the people that Bill had hurt, I think that's one way of saying it, um, she's not much of a Me Too movement kind of person in that context, is she? Uh, no, she's the exact opposite. She's the typical example of Harvey Weinstein's neighbors. And in fact, she was one of Harvey Weinstein's neighbors. One of the things that allowed Harvey Weinstein to keep getting away with this was his closeness to the Clintons. You know, the Clintons had this orbit of perverts, of predators, of guys like Jeffrey Epstein, Les Moonves, um, the CBS equivalent of Harvey Weinstein, and of course, Harvey Weinstein. And there's a reason they had this orbit of these people, because that's who they were. Uh, Hillary Clinton, in, uh, in her friend's private papers, uh, blamed Republicans for Bill Clinton's abuses. Uh, she blamed the women. She blamed everybody except Bill, and that is very, very typical. But again, the Democrats have been entirely hypocritical about the Me Too movement. We're now at the second anniversary of the Me Too movement. Um, they're on the way to restoring the reputation of Al Franken. I mean, I was just earlier doing an interview with Leanne Tweeden, and the basic reality is that Democrats are now prepping the way for Al Franken to come back to the Senate. Um, Hillary Clinton has never actually had to account for Bill Clinton's actions for her actions in intimidating and threatening some of these women. Uh, the bottom line is the Democrats find Me Too movement useful for their political purposes. They're willing to make some sacrifices for it occasionally, but there's been no real reckoning. So on that account, Hillary Clinton is certainly able to make a comeback. I mean, the front runner for quite a while has been Joe Biden, a guy who has his very own Me Too movement, a guy whose idea of interacting with women actually makes Bill Clinton look good. So the bottom line is there's been no reckoning in this regard. Uh, Hillary Clinton um, can absolutely come back as far as the Me Too movement is concerned. The problem is not the Me Too movement. The problem is that Hillary Clinton is a two-time loser at this point. And absolutely nobody is going to bet that the third time will finally be the charm because Hillary Clinton has no charm. Right. Uh, you, know, it's, you know, you brought up uh, Biden, just so I can uh, pick your intelligent brain here for a minute because... Uh, Daniel, you're also a very brilliant psychologist and have an interesting uh, perspective, very shrewd perspective on, uh, on psych human psychology. What do you make of Biden and all that smelling of the hair that he does? Do you have a, an interpretation on that? It's kind of creepy stuff, isn't it? I'm going to borrow a technical term from uh, Dr. Freud, which he laid out in several of his volumes. Um, it's in the original German, so people should be careful to follow this. The technical term, and I'm not sure I'm pronouncing it correctly, is he's a creep. <laughs> yeah, but it just, it's weird. It's, it, it's weird. It's weird, but again, Joe Biden is weird and he's a creep. I mean, this is not exactly the first time. I and mean, even uh, all the stuff is typical of his history of how he met his current wife um, when she was a model in a catalog. I mean, Biden is creepy in a somewhat conventional way. It's, right. it's not creepy in a high-end psychotic sort of way. I mean, when you look at Hillary Clinton, there are major things wrong there. There's just, I would say, a lack of a soul. Joe Biden is kind of an old-fashioned, creepy, Tammany Hall-type politician uh, who's a pervert and who's openly corrupt and crooked, and he's not really any good at hiding this stuff which is one reason why he's fading, why somebody like Elizabeth Warren, who is much better at actually pretending to be a progressive in the social justice and the Cherokee um, is actually rising because guys like Biden are very much old time Irish bars to politicos. And Bill Clinton was also that type of politician, that kind of old time politician. And Hillary Clinton has never had that kind of charm. Meanwhile, Joe Biden and Bill Clinton, I mean, their lives have kind of caught up with them. Their lifestyles have caught up with them. Bill Clinton barely seems to be on this planet, and Joe Biden is just kind of completely out of it. So, you know, there's something to be said maybe for good, clean living, because Joe Biden and Bill Clinton are advertisements for the exact opposite.
Okay, so thank you, Daniel. So look, I, I actually find this kind of fascinating. We're getting back to Hillary here. Um, so she's addicted to power. She has a yearning for power, but it appears what you're saying is that she won't probably get back in the race for several reasons, but yet she's kind of dangling this, this option or possibility. She keeps, she's going on this tour, giving all these interviews and lectures. She's constantly blaming everything and everyone for how she lost. Um, she hasn't stopped with her book tours, I don't think, which are very overextended. Um, so why won't she go away if she's not going to enter the race? Um, do you think it's just a kind of narcissistic megalomania? She just wants to stay in, in, a, in the limelight in a kind of weird, sick way? And that's exactly it. She needs to be in the limelight. There's nothing else because really, what is she going to go do? Can you picture her taking up knitting at home? Uh, Hillary Clinton's life has no purpose or meaning unless she's actually in the public eye. Uh, we think about her career, her entire goal is to be in the public eye, and yet she's completely, sadly, brokenly unfit to actually be there, which is the problem because American people really don't like handing power to people who are obviously megalomaniacs. Um, they hand power to politicians who have a certain amount of charm, who make them think that they're like them, that they're people they would want to have a beer with. Nobody wants to have a beer with Hillary Clinton. That would just be uh, the most unpleasant, uncomfortable, saddest 15 seconds there ever were. So the <laughs> bottom line is Hillary Clinton has nowhere else to go. She has nothing else to do. Her book tours have run out. At this point, she's glomming on to um, Chelsea's book series. And yes, Chelsea has a book series which was originally titled Cheaper Sisters, which is a ripoff of Elizabeth Warren's line. Um, but at the same time, now uh, Chelsea's book series has run out, so they're trying to do a kind of a mother-daughter thing about famous women. At this point, this is on the third series about this. Nobody's reading these books. I actually did a recent piece on this called Hillary Land. Uh, they're going to all these obscure places. They're going to book festivals that nobody's even heard of to push this thing. So there's nothing there. I mean, they tried the whole Broadway tour where Bill and Hillary would be on stage and that failed. Uh, they tried having John Lithgow and Laurie Metcalf playing versions of Bill and Hillary. That had to close early on Broadway. Uh, people have actually no interest in this. There have been way too many Hillary memoirs. Uh, there have been way too many Hillary books. So one thing to do is obviously to drop some trial balloons to get the idea, maybe maybe she's gonna run again. Uh, maybe we should give her another $6 million book contract and the off chance she's gonna become president of the United States. And you know, it, when you have uh, an appearance in the New York Times suggesting that somebody might run for president, that's a trial balloon. That's the definition of a trial balloon. So yes, Hillary Clinton is planting these trial balloons. And like the point at Elba, she very much wants people to come to her door and say, save us, Hillary. Joe Biden is failing, Elizabeth Warren is a disaster, come back Hillary Clinton, be our leader. And of course that's not going to happen, but at the same time, it's a wonderful fantasy for her to nurture. Right, right, now just a second. You actually uh, gave me a good hook for my next question that I was gonna ask you. So I think it would be fair to say that the democratic race, if that's what we wanna call it, is a bit of a disaster. Um, Biden, uh, it just seems, I think it would be fair to say his performance in the debates were dreadful for several reasons, uh, forgetting everything, just all that stuff with his son and how Trump has been very shrewd and smart, I think, and how he's exposed the Bidens on this. Elizabeth Warren and all that Pocahontas stuff. And then recently she was saying that she, I think if my memory serves me right, she was creating this fantasy that she had once gotten fired because people thought she was pregnant or what what is all that about is that is this all a disaster in, in terms of the democrats running well it's not an unsalvageable disaster biden just needs the right vice president um if he really wants to go after trump he should bring in bob Mueller to be his vice president they can have a joint ticket their slogan can be we can't find our car keys and we can't tie our shoes and we're not sure what day of the week this is and you've got Elizabeth Warren, you mentioned, uh, who falsely claimed that she was fired for being pregnant. Because you know Elizabeth Warren is a brutal corporate lawyer and the woman who was being paid six figures to teach one course. Um, but at the same time, she wants to pretend to be this warrior for the people, um, this suppressed Cherokee maiden who is just always fighting for social justice. So she has to keep making up these stories 
So yes, she pretends to be a member of an oppressed group, the Cherokee. And yes, she pretends that she was fired for being pregnant. In fact, the documents showed that was a lie. That was a whole bunch of nonsense. Uh, she was not fired for being pregnant. She actually, in the past, has admitted that she wanted to make a strategic decision because really, Elizabeth Warren, she was not going to dedicate her life to teaching children. She was going to dedicate her life to brutally clawing for as much money as she can get uh, before getting into politics for the exact same purpose while claiming to be against money, against wealth, against the rich. So this is what Elizabeth Warren does. She's a hypocrite and a phony. And President Trump, I think, is going to be able to expose that very effectively. Yeah, with Elizabeth Warren, Daniel, also, it just it's incredible what the establishment media won't touch. I was very intrigued recently with her. She made some kind of an apology to the Native Indians, saying that she had learned a lot now, you know? And I was wondering, what exactly does that mean? What did you learn? What was your mistake? What are you apologizing for? What... So you've learned not to lie? That was a very strange apology and there was no follow-up on it by the media. She had learned a lot. What did you learn? Up until now you thought it was okay to lie? No, she had learned a lot. She had learned that if you're going to pretend to be Cherokee, um, you need a better costume and you need to actually go the full route, dye your hair, do a complete makeover. I mean, what it was with Warren Warren was that in the past her tactic of pretending to be an American Indian. We now have the paperwork. The media forever denied us. We have the paperwork. She pretended to be an American Indian. She actually filled that form saying she was an American Indian. Um, and of course, this doesn't play quite that well today, the way it did back then. So she had to do a tour. She reached out to various tribal leaders. Uh, she promised them assorted things. And that's what it was all about. What she learned was that if you lie, you have to lie in a smarter way. And since we're talking about Hillary Clinton, that's something Hillary Clinton never actually learned. Hillary Clinton's lies were always bad. They were always lame. They're always awkward. And they were always so easily disprovable. So Elizabeth Warren at least is trying to show that she learned from Hillary's mistakes. She learned from her own mistakes. And from now on, her lies are going to be much better. Wow. Well, we got to go, Daniel. Um, under 10 seconds. Is there one Democrat in the United States that wants Hillary Clinton back for another round? Uh, the people working for her probably do because they, they want to get back on top. Uh, beyond them, I can't think of anybody except a few crazy ladies who follow Hillary Clinton around uh, under the illusion that she is just like them who actually wanted to run again. Wow. And will she run again? Um, I think she's going to run as far as the local liquor store to get some more Chardonnay. Um, I don't think she's going to successfully run for president. Okay. Daniel, thank you so much for joining us this evening. My pleasure. Thank you, Jamie. Everybody, go to The Point at Front Page Magazine and read Daniel Greenfield's brilliant blog. Please remember, we're a fan-generated program. If you like what we do, please support us at jamieglazoff.com. And don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel of the Glasoff Gang. Good night.